Welcome to A Sandwich and Some Lovin'. It's a podcast starring me. <laughs> starring me. I don't know where that came from. I guess I'm just still floating high on the award I received today. I'm Kelly Raspberry Evans, AAK, AKA <laughs> City of Dallas Mom of the Year along with my husband and podcast co-host, and as far as I know, awardless, Alan Evans. <laughs> and no, I'm not drunk, I swear. I just have been giddy all day. I think it's more slap happy and punch drunk, honestly. Should you even include your last name Evans? Why don't you just drop it at this Oh, did point? I just say Kelly Raspberry? I mean, no, Kelly no, Raspberry no, Evans. you said Kelly Raspberry Evans. Why don't you just drop the Evans? What? What do you mean? <laughs> you said you were the star of the podcast I and Mama Dear, and, and I'm awardless, and, and you the awardless. Why? Why, <laughs> why are you uh, besmirching me so early? Oh, into I this? don't mean to besmirch you, honey. It's just been a, it's been a day. It's been a long day, and I'm, I'm seriously, I think I'm punch drunk. It's been a day, huh? It's been yeah. a day. Let me look on my list here because people love lists. I actually your list of your day or my I day? actually have two lists. Lists, and we're going to get into these lists. Okay. I had a day. I don't see that on this list, but I have a <laughs> list of things people say. Oh. And I bet you we're guilty of a few of these. Oh. You see these on the social media. We haven't done this in a long time. I think one of our very first episodes, we did words that you and I like and don't like. This is the years ago. Yeah. But I thought we'd do an update, or I'm doing an updated version, this podcast, of things that I see on the social media. That bother you? Well, some do, but some I'm guilty of saying. So we'll go into that. Okay. If you ever want to know what's going on back in the earlier podcasts, y'all are all welcome to go back and listen. We have over 500 <laughs> that we started. Oh. People love the sound of cans opening, I found. But um, we started this podcast almost seven years ago. And um, my, our friend Susan has been going back to the beginning and then listening backwards. So it kind of meets in the middle. Susan Shocker? Yeah, Susan Shockerer. But they say they pronounce I it think Shocker. I think Susan's been uh, listening with uh, Craig too, right? I don't know if Craig listens as much. Her husband, Dr. Shocker. Yeah. But um, she could tell you. She's bringing up things. I'm like, Susan, I have no recollection of that conversation. I don't have recollection ever happening, yeah, of like last week. But, you know, fi over 500 episodes, it's really hard to remember everything. We've well, probably repeated ourselves multiple times. I know you have. I'm sure I have. I know I have, too. I'm sure I have. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, we got a little bit of that. Um, I never did talk about... Like three podcasts ago, I wanted to talk about this. <laughs> that? A new fast food restaurant that I tried with the boys, and I thought I'd make mention of it since I teased it three episodes ago, and nobody cares anymore, but I'm still going to honor my commitment. All right. So we'll do that, and then whatever. Talk about my award. And your award. Why don't and you how just... you can all hear me receive my award <laughs> very well, soon. Why don't you just start with, you want to just start with that? Podcast. Okay, so there is a podcast called... <clears throat> is it called Inside the Moms Club? Inside mm. the Moms Club. In the Moms. Inside the Moms Club. I will get a mm. definitive answer on that for you very soon. Is this Again, the podcast that gave you the award? Yes, it is. I think it's called Inside the Moms Club. But you're Club. unsure of the name. Okay. All right. That's okay. That's okay. So they were coming to town. They're taking their podcast out on the road, which, you know what, isn't really a bad idea. That's something maybe, you know, pre-COVID, Alan and I actually had a discussion Remember with the, the the lady that was working with our company at the time, Charlotte, and we talked about... We're talking about discussion. We, we did it. We did podcasts on the road. But, I'm the mayor of Maybank. But, Remember? I know, but we were talking about doing Next Level, and we were going to maybe do a combination of a sandwich and some loving and love letters to Kelly. Remember? Love letters, love letters to Kelly. And we were going to do like Alan. We were just talking about the possibilities uh, of taking our podcast on the road with mm -hmm. Alan maybe doing a little magic. Blue sky thinking. With us doing our A Sandwich and Some Lovin' podcast with me doing some love letters to Kelly. Love letters. Maybe having a musical guest and making it a big thing. And then COVID hit and Charlotte's not there anymore. And I don't think anybody's discussed that since. But back to well, you gotta you gotta club. discuss podcasts for that to be discussed. What? 
I said, you have to discuss podcasts at your office for that um, to be discussed. Don't, don't be negative. All right, so anyway, Inside the Moms Club has decided to take their podcast on the road, and they did one in Austin, Texas, which is where the hosts are home-based, and then they brought it to the next big city, Dallas, right? And I live in a suburb of Dallas. And so uh, about a month ago, my phone rang, and this wonderful woman named Laurie Muslow, who is, I think, think serves as kind of like a producer behind the scenes, said, you know what, Kelly, we'd love to have you on Inside the Moms Club when we bring the podcast to Dallas because we've heard so many wonderful things about you. Everybody loves you. This is what she told me, Alan. Everybody loves me in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, mm -hmm. including the suburb of Plano, Texas. And they were, going, they were going to give me the very first ever Inside the Moms Club Mom Award. This is the very first award? Very first one. How about that? I wish I thought to bring it with me. It, uh, I'll go. I'll is show it, it like a trophy? Pocket. It's a trophy. And they're actually um, going to take some time to edit this podcast because they also do a big production element with it, with the cameras and lighting and wow. sound equipment. Wow. I was wearing one of those lavalier Sounds fancy. microphones pinned, you know, clipped to my my lapel. Yes. I had the battery pack on the back of my pants wow. with the mic cord dropped down my shirt. Wow. That's how you know it's that was fancy. professional production. Yeah, that was professional. And anyway, so it was really actually very nice. That I, I was able to invite a lot of my friends to come and um, watch me receive my prestigious award. And Emma Kelly, I said, you know what, Emma Kelly? I'm a mom because of you first. Mm -hmm. She was mm -hmm. my firstborn. Now Alan's brought three more children into my life, but she was the reason I became a mom. I said, you know what? I don't I don't know if they'll count this as an excused absence or, absence or not, but you can stay home from school and go with me and watch me receive my prestigious award if you want, and she did. And, and what was her reaction at first? She was like, okay. <laughs> That's about it for 17. <laughs> but, uh, you know, my, my parents were going to go as well. I thought it was it was really supposed to be kind of like a, a, a girls-only thing, I thought. But then my daddy RSVP'd that he wanted to go. So I was like, oh, okay. But literally, there were like three men in the whole event. But um, I was told it was a woman's event. I, I thought it was Which is why I... Alan, did not, Alan chose I not to support me. Clepped out of that. <laughs> no, I told him he didn't have to. But, um... Anyway, so my parents, with rush hour traffic, because this thing happened in the heart of Dallas at 9 o'clock in the morning, and people had to be there between 8 and 8.30 to get you know, situated, and rush hour traffic, and we never drive in it, because I go to work at the Kid Craddock Morning Show, and I'm, I have to be there between 5.30 and you know, 5.45 in the morning at the latest, and so I don't ever deal with rush hour traffic. So heading into the heart of Dallas from the suburbs, we were predicting disaster, and so my parents, in order to be there by 8 a.m., they wanted to leave at 6.30. And my daughter's like, I'm not riding with them. I said, well, the only other option you have is to get up even earlier, earlier, go into work with me. And she's like, I want to do that. Because her rationale was, I'll go to work with you. I'll, we have this big conference room area with couches. She said, I'll sleep a little while longer. And then you wake me up. Give me about 30 minutes because young, fresh people, little fresh faces, don't need a lot of time to get ready. Give me 30 minutes and I'll be ready to go. And that's what we did. Did she so, pass out in the conference room? She did. When I woke her up this morning, I walked into her room about a quarter till five. And she was laying there and she had like this grimace on her face in her sleep. And I thought she was making a face because I walked in and some of the, I didn't turn on the lights, but the light from outside the room was coming in and she was making a face. I was like, Emma Kelly you got to get up. Now, I'm not going to remember verbatim what she said. Verbatim. She's like, oh, she's, oh, I'm going to ride with Laura. I'm going to ride with Laura's going to take me. I said, what, Laura? She goes, Mom, it's in the book. I said, who's taking you? Laura, I don't have time to deal with this. I said, Laura Shelton? Because we have a friend, Laura, that was going to go. Unfortunately, wasn't able to make it. She's not feeling well, Alan. Oh. And then Emma Kelly rolled over. She goes, Mom. It's the tortured poets department. So she was dreaming about Taylor Swift and some book oh. and somebody named Laura. I don't know what she was talking about. And I started laughing. I said, honey, you're dreaming. You're dreaming. I need you to wake up. 
So anyway, she was she was up and ready and waiting for me when I came out of getting ready this morning. So she was saying some nonsense in her sleep. A lot of right? nonsense. But I had to get up extra early because I had to get hair, makeup, completely dressed. I had to have my showbiz top five completely prepared before I went into work this morning because um, I had to do that and then hit the road for this um, Inside the Moms Club podcast recording. But it was it was a great day. It was it was really nice to see everybody there. Well congratulations on your award. Thank you. I am I know the best mom in Dallas. You and are. if you don't believe it, I've got a trophy to prove it. Um I know Emma Kelly was just there, but uh, me and the boys were there with you in spirit. Thank you. I know you do a lot for the, the boys as well. A lot. I, I appreciate you saying that. Thank a lot. You. Especially making lunches. I, I truly Which believe Which may be the only reason we got married. Is so I didn't have to make lunches. There you go. <laughs> I truly believe that that is one of the top three reasons he married me. If not number one, it's, it's up one there. Of the top three. It's up there. So he does not have to make lunches or set foot inside a grocery store again. Well, not true. I just I was over at K. Roger with oh, you just the other day. Exactly. But you went kicking and screaming. Not true again. Another, uh, that's misinformation. I'm being misrepresented. I, it's very you true. You said no. Well, no. You said there was a Starbucks in there. And I said, oh, okay, that's cool. I'll just get a coffee while we go in. And I think it was just like that. One of, and what did you do? I, one of my favorite things to do, and Alan knows this, and I have told this when people ask me, what is one of your favorite things to do with Alan? And as silly as it sounds, is I love to run errands with him. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah. yeah, I've told you that. Mm -hmm. I love it when we go to the gardening center together. I love it when we go just... Got like to go to Callaway's? Goods. Callaway's. I used to love it when we would go buy plants well, and I, stuff. I, there's nowhere else for me to throw in a plant. I know. I'm, I'm just done. telling Everything's you. Everything's done. And I loved it when we would go grocery shopping together, which yeah. he did do with me a couple of times when he was courting me. Yeah. And led me to believe this is something that we would always do together. But instead, no. So I had to just pick up a few items because I was going to a potluck this past weekend. And we had to drop the boys off for haircuts at a salon right next door to my favorite grocery store, Kroger. And so I said, Alan... Instead of, you know, dropping the boys off, I said, why don't you come in with me to Kroger? And I tempted him with, they've added a Starbucks, thinking he'll have his coffee, I'll have my hot chai tea latte, and we'll go up and down the aisles picking out, you know, maybe a random snack that you might like, or get that purple onion I needed for my recipe, as well as some um, crumbled bacon, because I was making a chicken salad. And, um, but Alan said, <sighs> I'm just going to stay up here and look at the magazines. It's not high. While you go it's get not high phrase, While you go get what you need. I didn't sound like that either. Here okay, are the, then you tell <clears> how it happened. Here are the three things that would tell how it happened. Here are the three things that would have to change. Here's another list. Top three things that will have to change at K. Roger for me to walk around in the store with you. Number one, raise the temperature in that building about 15 degrees. It's not that. So cold. raise it from 60 degrees. To 75 degrees. It's only cold in the frozen food section. Number two, don't give any of the ladies, and I'm calling out you ladies, yes ladies, don't give any of them carts because they're all going to run their cart at me and hit me in the shins. Honey, that's Costco, not, yeah, there not too. Kroger. There too. That's Costco, not Kroger. That does not happen at Kroger. And then number three, I want checkers at every aisle, on every checkout aisle. I don't want to check it out myself. No, they, they I don't do, want to check it out myself. They do have checkers. I'll put the crap up on the conveyor belt, and it'll roll down there, and I want someone to look at my produce, say hello, how you doing, they Mr. Evans? That. I'm having a great day. Thank you. How are you? They have that. I want that. I want that human interaction. They have that. I don't want self-checkout. They have both options. Those are the three things I want. And they have both options. And all I ask is my husband to walk with me up and down the aisles. That's literally all I ask. And he's... I'm just going to sit up here and look at magazines. <laughs> did, did I sound that emo? Yeah. <laughs> and you know what else? He didn't think that the, the Starbucks lady was snappy enough. Whoa, wait a minute. She was taken too no, long. No, no. Now hold on. She was talking. She, no, was, she, she was being conversational. She, now she was just trying to engage me tell a you, little too much. Alan and I were the only two people oh. in line. The only two. And she said, what's the name? 
you should have seen him. He was like, Alan. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't sigh. I just no. I just when she asked me what my name was, like, I just why. I just looked behind me. <laughs> That's and what he did. There was nobody behind me. That's a, you know that was a. What's the word I'm looking for? Prickish? That was a prickish move. You know what else is making me crazy right now? The fact that you're not doing that. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. You know what? I love the way makeup can transform your face. It can transform your mood, right, ladies? Makeup can give you confidence. It can make you feel sexy. It can help you look awake. <laughs> I'm not exactly a makeup artiste, but Thrive Cosmetics makes it easy for me to create makeup looks from fresh face to full glam. And if you're looking for a little refresh in your makeup routine, I highly recommend Thrive Cosmetics, especially the Brilliant Eye Brightener. Now, this is a product I use every single day. 16 buildable shades to choose from and play with. I use the Stella shade. That's one I use every single day, no matter what. It's a light champagne color. I just put a little in the corner of my eyes, over my lids for a fresh look. But when I want to add more drama, I swipe a metallic shade all over my eyelid and just blend it with my finger. It's a really easy way to create a smoky eye. You cannot mess it up. So order the Brilliant Eye Brightener and get the Liquid Lash Extensions Mascara because remember my daughter thought I had literally gone back and had my false lash extensions put back on the first day she saw me wearing that. And what really warms my heart is Thrive Cosmetics gives back. For every product you buy, they donate to help communities thrive, such as helping survivors of domestic abuse, supporting veterans during and after military service, and you know how we love our veterans. Refresh your everyday look with Thrive Cosmetics, luxury beauty that gives back. And right now, you can get an exclusive 10% off your first order at thrivecosmetics.com slash sandwich. That's Thrive Cosmetics. C-A-U-S-E-M-E-T-I-C-S dot -E -E com slash sandwich for 10% off your first order. Thank you, Thrive Cosmetics. We love Thrive Cosmetics. Speaking of Starbucks, I was in a Starbucks today, and do you remember me talking, I don't know, uh, what was this, six months ago? About, no. Okay. Well, <laughs> on this podcast, I talked about a knitting circle. Yes, I do remember that. You remember that? I don't remember a lot, but I do remember you seeing a sitting circle, a knitting circle. Yes. Yes. Um, Y'all, I know I sound drunk. It was a, I swear I'm not. It was a long table, um, ladies uh, all knitting, and they had all their knitting stuff, and they were visiting, knitting, visiting, and knitting, and more visiting and more knitting, and I thought it was really cool. I was like, oh, everybody's meeting here at Starbucks to do some knitting, you know? Well, fast forward six months later, I hadn't seen the knitting circle, the knitting ladies. I go in today. There they are. They're finishing up their blankets. They're back. Are they making scarves? So I took a, a kind of a picture of the knitting circle because I'm I'm kind of a I'm kind of a fanboy of the knitting circle. I don't know why. I just think it's a cool thing. So they're so I posted it on my social it's media. Charming and yeah, old it's world old school. About it. yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So one of uh, our friends saw this. She shall remain uh, nameless, Amy Wilkerson. And she said... The future Mrs. Allen Evans. Yes. She said... Don't say that. Mr. True. Mr. Jeff Wilkerson probably doesn't think that's real well, funny. Jeff Wilkerson probably feels the same way. Because <laughs> you and Amy have the same sense of humor. <laughs> Lou. <laughs> yeah. She says, see if you can find out what they're talking about. See? So I'm like, well, okay. So... I'm, I'm sitting pretty far away. I mean, maybe 20 feet away, but they're talking. I can hear them. So once I stop just doing what I'm doing and then start to try to kind of eavesdrop on what they're saying, I'm pretty much part of the knitting circle. Oh, yeah? I am. And here were the... They set. invited you over? No, they didn't. But I listened to what they were saying. You should... You know what you should do real quick before you get into your list? Mm -hmm. You should go over and say, you ladies look delight... Are they older ladies? You ladies look so Are you kidding delightful. Me? Are you kidding me? I'd like to buy you all a round of coffee. I'm going to do that next time. 100%. Or I'd like to buy you all a pastry. Or <laughs> something like that. Or a, on me. Or a dog nut. 
Yeah. I like those egg bites. So here are the seven things that I heard the knitting circle talking about. I know everyone's very curious as to what a knitting circle talks about. Here's what they talk about. Number one, they were talking about Chef Boyardee pizzas and how good they are. Oh. I didn't realize there was a Chef Boyardee I've pizza. I've never made I've never made a Chef Boyardee pizza. I've made you make it out of ravioli? I've made Chef Boyardee ravioli, which Do you, you Okay. I don't know. I don't know. Let's talk about it. I don't know. It. Has Chef Boyardee expanded into pizza kits? Or are they taking Chef Boyardee and spreading it out on a pizza crust and baking it? Because you could do that with the ravioli. You could do it with the SpaghettiOs. That might be a I don't thing. Know. I'll go one further. Is Chef, Bior <laughs> Is Chef Boyardee insensitive to Italians? No, it's a real chef. Okay. That was a real chef, Boyardee. Number two, another thing they talked about, they were comparing and contrasting deviled ham and spam and how they used to advertise more on television. Not TV, not streaming, not YouTube, on television. Oh, television. You know, when I first started in radio in... Um, 1852. Something like that. It was before I came to Dallas, which was is going to be 30 years this the end of this May. Um, we did a promotion with Spam on WJMX in Florence, South Carolina. South Carolina. And what we were doing was, if you would call us and tell us your favorite Spam recipe, hmm. you would win a free can of Spam. That's what we were giving away. What state consumes the most spam per capita? I would think it's Hawaii. Hawaii. Because isn't that, yeah, is it based on Hawaii? I don't think so, but it's hard. They don't grow any beef. But they over love. There. They love. Well, spam yeah, you got to ship everything over there in cans, right? Maybe that's why. Um, and oh, they like pineapples. Yeah. Um, pineapples and spam. The boys like spam and eggs. Okay, so they talked about deviled ham and, and spam and how they used to advertise more on television. Uh, another thing they talked about was the volume of spam. I think it kind of transitioned into the, somebody said spam. So then they start talking about spam calls, mm. spam telephone calls. Mm. They, were, they were just flabbergasted at how many spam telephone calls they get. Because is spam phone calls, is that based on spam, the lunch meat, the canned meat? Where did the word spam calls come from? Oh, good That's what call, I'm saying. Good call. Is, is, is there a connection? Why is it called spam phone calls? Is it based on canned meat? We need one of our producers to pass me a note on that. I'm not sure. Um, another thing they talked about were air conditioning issues. Some, one of the ladies was having air conditioning issues. In her home? In her home. And then this transitioned into the high price of repairing said issues. Yeah. Because I, I, it was my understanding that these were retired ladies. Mm. Fixed income. Yeah. We're all heading that way. Got that right. Some um, of us are closer to it than others. Now, here's what I thought was very interesting as I was eavesdropping. Uh, they talked about how some brands of clothing don't wash and wear properly. Mm. Now, I didn't catch the brands. But if I had to guess, I'd throw Old Navy up in there. I'd throw Faded Glory up in there. I'd throw, what's that stuff Target pushes? Faded Glory is from no, Target. No, no, no. I, I thought that was uh, Walmart. What's, uh, Target know. is Mas Massimo? Oh, Massimo is No, from what's Target. their store brand though? Good, 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 good fella. Good fella. Good yeah. fella. I'd throw good fella up in there because you wash that stuff one time and it goes from a large to like a schmedium. Really? And it's all faded and Maybe pilled. Maybe it's the way you launder it. Well, they talked about Target. They weren't happy with they the, weren't. no, they were not happy with the wash and wear at Target. I'll tell you what drives me nuts is Emma Kelly's laundry, because as a teenage girl, it consists mostly of Lululemon, and you know, of course. Dime? Well, that's what they're all wearing, and they, it, they suggest you hang all of Lululemon and not put it in the dryer to protect the elasticity, elasticity or something. And Emma Kelly also, her, uh, the other half of her wardrobe, when it's not Lululemon, it's her riding gear, which also, with the, the pants, there's like a sticky texture to the pants for riding that keeps you on the horse, I guess. I don't know. So 90% of Emma Kelly's laundry 
has to be hung up to dry. That's a lot of fun. That's a lot of fun. I thought she was doing it now. She has been doing it more, but I'll tell you what. I've been, because she's been so much better about doing it, because I don't mind doing laundry. Yeah, right. I really don't mind. Mom of the year. I That's what makes me mom of the year. Right. And just for the city of Dallas. Right. But, um... But because she, you know, is chipping in more, I like to help her more. And so that's that's it. But, yeah, 90% of her stuff, I'd say, is hang up to dry. Okay. Well, then I got a question Very for you. Very time consuming. Then I got a question for you. One of the ladies recommended to the other ladies, because they were having problems with the wash and wear quality, they said, have you tried all temperature cheer? I have not I mean, I think, I think my mom did that in the 70s. I don't know. Well, they, no, it's do they still, is that, a, is that still a brand? Cheer? Cheer is still a brand. Yeah, really? I typically go with Tide. Dime. You know what? That's the most expensive. But you know what? You know what? Nah, I, I've done enough laundry in my life to know that if you scrimp on laundry detergent, it, it, it smells funny. Your stuff comes out stiff. It just, it doesn't uh, like soak into the water right. The expensive laundry detergent in my opinion, it's worth it. It's worth it. Yeah, I splurge. I do every once in a while. I've I've tried Persil, I think, which is also what Persil, P E R S I L. I think it's what Persil? it's called. I think it's what it's called, and it's more because if it's on a good sale, you know, I'll try every oh. once in a while because laundry detergent is expensive. It is very expensive. But I have tried. Um, Man, I tried Arm & Hammer recently because it was on sale. Because mm. I do every once mm. in a while, but I always end up going back to mm. Tide. But Emma Kelly was like, I do not like this because the caps, when you pour the liquid out in the caps, they make it impossible for you to read the little lines of how far to go. It's like you cannot barely see it. And my daughter has great vision. Mm -hmm. She's 17. I need readers for everything now. Mm. But I mean, like the cap made me never want to buy Arm & Hammer again. I know this is a silly topic to be having, but these are real world problems. And then the last thing uh, before I just said, you know what, this is creepy. Me, You're me. being creepy? Yeah, I'm being creepy. That's why you should have offered to buy them coffee. I'm being creepy. I'm sitting here in my motorcycle stuff and I'm kind of leaning over listening to the knitting circle. Were you wearing your helmet at the time? No, I wasn't wearing my helmet, but I had my, you know, I had my cheaters perched on the end of my nose and I'm kind of like... It helps like, you hear better. Yeah, I'm kind of leaning over. Well, so I can make notes, you know. The last thing they talked about, a very controversial subject, were, was, in their opinion, they believed we were becoming more obese as a nation. Well, yeah. Except for that semaglutide, man. Everybody's incredibly shrinking. It's the miracle. I thought that that stuff, like, if you take it, yeah, you're going to lose weight, but then you always have to take it. Well, I mean, I don't really know. I'm not educated enough on it to talk about it. But if Which, you have diabetes, that is a lifelong condition. Diabetes. So this medication is something you would take for your for the rest of your life anyway, right? Your, like your diabetes medication. And I have a friend who is a diabetic who is taking it. And she's dropped a good amount of weight. She's not walking around like some of these emaciated celebrities with dark circles and gaunt cheeks that what is happening because some people I think are going a little too far with it but she's you know and she's feeling healthy and looking healthy because she is diabetic but if you're not diabetic from what I understand it like you just don't you don't care about eating right it just takes away that that's something in your brain where you're always like I need to snack I'm bored I need to munch you know I need to nibble 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 it takes away that which is good but um, it's just the people that I think are going too far with it is the problem, in my opinion. But I'm not really educated enough on I'm it. I'm not super educated on it, and I'm not going to judge people who do it. No, I mean... But... If what you're happens gonna if you get, come off of right, it? Right. If you're going to get hooked on a drug to lose weight, at what point does that ever stop? But that's... I'm just saying... It's not hooked on a drug. Don't say it's hooked. It's not like, it's not like an addiction. Well, you take it to maintain your weight or right, lose a bunch of weight. Right, that's the thing. It's like, are you going to have to stay on it for the rest of your life right. to maintain the weight loss? That's the thing. But that doesn't well, mean you're kinda, addicted. Yeah, well, that okay. Wrong, addicted. wrong word. But you're, then you're hooked on the drug. Well, you have you have to take it, I guess, to maintain Sounds it. Sounds like an addiction to me. But... Okay. Unless you learn new habits. If you create new healthy habits while you're on it and then come off of it. And don't go back to your old ways. Okay. 
So yeah, that was the knitting circle. Uh, very interesting. They seem like very lovely ladies. Uh, probably kind of creepy that I did eavesdrop, but you can blame Amy Wilkerson, one of our very best customers for that content. That was all her. That was all her doing. Just don't let Amy have my jewelry. Just let Emma <laughs> Kelly have oh, it. Come on. I just think Emma Kelly, even, even though this ring is not her style, it was my mother Price's ring. Mm -hmm. And Amy's going to say, it's my style. Um, no. I don't think Amy talks like that. It's got to go to Emma <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> that, is, that is so wheels off. That whole that whole bit is wheels off. What I don't, bit? I don't like it. The bit you're, you do. You do. Did I die before you? <laughs> God. Can we talk about what happens if you died before me? Then I'm worth more dead than a lot than alive by far. Um, mm, why don't good to know? Why don't you do that, and then we're going to transition after talking about obesity. We're going to transition into fast food. Oh, well, okay. You know, I was just talking earlier about how I was a guest on a podcast that went out on the road and how, you know, it's kind of fun to think about what that might look like like for us with a sandwich and some lovin', right? Taking our podcast to the next level. It'd be a challenge for sure. But you know what? Pair Eyewear can help you see what is possible. Because with just one pair, you get infinite possibilities starting at just 60 bucks. And that includes your prescription. And with Pear Eyewear's Sun Top Collection, you can protect your eyes in style without paying extra for prescription sunglasses. Plus, get 15% off by using code LOVEN at PearEyewear.com. Now, I use the virtual try-on to model several different frame styles. I chose the Kirby because I got a wide head. But the real fun is choosing the top frames, which you can match with the holiday, you can choose top frames to match the season, your favorite sports team, your favorite superhero. They've got new designs that drop every month. You just snap them on literally because they've got these tiny little magnets. And I've been reading a lot more lately, so I've been relying on my readers. But what if I want to read outside? You know, I'd be not squinting because I can't see. I'd be squinting from the glare of the sun, but I just snap on the sun tops. I don't have to invest in expensive prescription sunglasses. You can get fashion and eye protection in a snap with Pear Eyewear. Base frames for men, women, and kids start at just 60 bucks. Top frames start at 25. Sun top frames start at just $30. And if you have FSA funds, use them at Pear Eyewear. And in addition to our special discount, you get free standard shipping and a flexible 30-day return policy. One pair infinite possibilities. Go to PearEyewear.com and use code LOVIN for 15% off your first pair and support the show by mentioning that a sandwich and some lovin' sent you in your post-checkout survey. That's Pear, P-A-I-R, Eyewear.com, code LOVIN. Thank you, Pear Eyewear. Okay, so uh, like several months ago, I was coming back from... I was coming back from getting my hair cut, which is in Dallas, and I was riding up a road. I don't usually ride up to, to come back home. And I saw this big square purple building. I'm like, what in the hell is that? I've never seen that building before. This is an intersection I'm familiar with, even though I don't go that way very often. I'm like, what is that? It went up real quick. Yes, and it's the color of Grimace. Remember Grimace? From McDonald's. Yes. It's that pur deep purple color. Well, it turns out this was a restaurant, and it's a McDonald's concept called Cosmics. C-O-S-M-C-S. -S. I was invited to the grand opening. Dime. Couldn't make it. Why didn't you say something? I was busy. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, I saw this. I'm like, wow, that's pretty cool. I had no idea McDonald's had anything other than McDonald's. So I do a little research, and it turns out this Cosmics in Dallas, Texas, USA, is one of just a handful, like two or three. It's like a test market. They're thing. being tested. Yeah, they're being tested. I don't, oh, wow, that's, that's kind of cool. Well, I didn't go in, and I didn't really think about it until um, a couple of weekends ago, Cole had one of his buddies over, and Dylan was here too. So the three boys were here. You and Emma Kelly were out doing something. I can't remember what. I don't remember. Yeah. Well, anyway, Emma Kelly wanted asked me if I would take her Jeep to the car wash because it was really dirty. And I said, yeah, sure. What I didn't tell her is that me and three smelly boys are going to get in that Jeep, and we're going to go for a little joyride. <laughs> and then you're going to FaceTime her while you're doing it. <laughs> so we hop in the Jeep. 
I take the boys and I'm like, let's go try this Cosmics, man. I've never heard of this. This is pretty cool. So we go down to Cosmics and you walk in and it's like there's a drive through and most people use the drive through but you can go inside, but there's no tables. It's just a room. So like you're in this gray room and there's no decorations. It's like there's, the Matrix. Yeah, there's nowhere to sit. It's just, There's just a window. Was there a pill inside the window? No. Two pills. There was a friendly Cosmics representative. Oh, there was somebody. Yes. So we, Just sitting there in the window. Just sitting there in the window. You can order on the little, there's kiosks. So that's how they prefer you do it, is order on the kiosk and then just pick it up. But you can go to the window and order as well. So we ordered, and they have like, let me read this to you. They have this kind of wild, wild menu. So this is from Cosmics. It says, um... As part of a limited test, the first Cosmics location opened in Bolingbrook, Illinois, with a handful of additional outposts planned in the coming months. Cosmics seamlessly blends brand new otherworldly beverage creations with a small lineup of food, including a select only a select few McDonald's favorites, all designed to boost your mood into the stratosphere, if only for a few moments. So Reading between the lines, all this stuff, super sugary, tons of caffeine. Like they Perfect. have they have these drinks, like there's a tropical spice aid, a blueberry ginger boost, sour cherry energy boost. I want that. S'mores cold brew, churro frappe, Ooh. blackberry mint green tea, mm -mm. island pick me up punch. That's what I had. You know what I was thinking too? These are, these'd be good mixers. Roll through Cosmics and then a little do. Maybe they have a happy hour. Give it a little nip. Put a little nip of vodka in there. Uh, berry hibiscus sour aid. Popping pear slush. Sour tango lemonade. Chai frappe burst. Turmeric spice latte. Those are some of the drinks. But uh, one of Cole's buddy, Christian, he had a drink and he said, this thing is sweet. This is a teenage boy. He's like, this thing is sweet. Too sweet. And, he said, and then we looked at the nutritional nutritional information. They gotta tell you. Had a ton of caffeine in it too. I'm like, I hope I'm not getting you in trouble with your mom drinking all this caffeine. He goes, ah, it's, it's okay. He clutches his heart. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But they also have different foods, like they don't have at McDonald's. Creamy avocado tomatillo sandwich. <gasps> that sounds good. How about the spicy queso sandwich? That's what I had. I had the spicy queso sandwich. Did you get extra queso? No, I just ordered it as it comes. Mm. McPops. What's that? I think they're like big nays, big nets. Beignets. Yeah, good eye, mate. They uh, had pretzel bites, savory hash brown bites, which you can get hash browns at McDonald's, but these are little bites. Yeah. Uh, they had ice like cream. Like tater tots. Yeah, they had ice cream. No, but they're flat. They had ice cream. Smash tater tots. They had brownies, cookies, caramel fudge brownies, and then the things that the only two things they had that are on the McDonald's menu are Ed, egg McMuffins. And McFlurries. Why do they keep pushing Egg McMuffin when the McGriddle is a superior breakfast sandwich? Come at me if you don't agree, but how can you disagree? You can have that McGriddle. I like the syrup is baked into the pancake. I prefer the uh, I prefer the sausage, egg, and cheese biscuit. But I'm saying, if you're gonna, why are you putting the egg McMuffin, the McMuffin on there? Why? That's dry. I like the McGriddle. So anyway, there was nowhere to eat because there's no tables. They don't even have outside seating. No outside they want seating. No loitering. No. So we walked all the way back over to the Jeep, opened the trunk or the hatch or whatever, and posted up and had a picnic in the back of Emma Kelly's Jeep. This was pre-wash though. Thank you. Yes, pre-wash. So I had to take a picture of us eating in Emma Kelly's Jeep and then also send that to her. Make her mental. <laughs> no, she was fine. She appreciated you. And then we that. went and washed the Jeep and it was all good. But the boys gave it a, they said, not the best they've ever had, but definitely not the worst. They, they all rated it between a six and a seven on a scale of 10. Well, you know, they might come back and order something different and give it a 10. Yeah. I just thought it was kind of cool. It was like, holy crap, I've never... I didn't know McDonald's was trying some new stuff. Well, they got to. They've been doing the same stuff forever. Yeah, but you gotta keep changing with the times. Remember when you were a kid and you'd get the pie 
Yes, the, the fried pie. But they had the fried pie, the yeah. cherry, and, and the apple. Be, it was caution. Oh, it, the insides were hot. I forget how they. That stuff said was it. like lava. Yeah, you. It, they meant it. Oh, they said caution. Ooh, because they used to fry them, and now I understand they bake them, so they're oh. not as hot. They man. These health nuts ruining everything for the rest of us. They I don't just know. want our fried apple pies. According to the knitting circle, we're getting obese as a nation. Hey, we were less obese before they started tinkering with all that. When they just left everything alone. <laughs> it's the truth. It's the truth. Look back at the 50s and 60s where they started doing all that light and low-cal crap. There was no fat people. Well, the worst fat people. There wasn't that many fat people. Look back. I don't know. I just, here are a couple of observations. You ever been to New York City? You've been to New York City. I was so disappointed I've the never last time seen, I went. I've never seen a really, really big person in New York City. I mean, I, I know they exist well, and that's the, great. The that's fine. <laughs> yeah, the, the tourists. But people that live in New York City, they stay, I think they stay thin because they walk everywhere. Yeah, walk They just walk, 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 walk. And then Japan, who has the highest uh, life expectancy on the planet, men live 82 or something and women are even more than that it's because of their lifestyle their diets and their exercise well it's you know it's true when you go over to like europe you can go over there and i've heard so many people that say the same thing and and i haven't been in 20 years but you go over there and nothing has preservatives in it you don't buy a week's worth of groceries you go and you buy kind of what you need you go to the market every day that's like an experience and the bread and butter, I'm just like, I can't get, I, I remember, I can't remember now, it's been over 20 years, but I remember I just, oh my God, this bread and butter, it was just like heaven. Everything you ate was so good. But, you know, Heather Mc, uh, McMahon is a comedian I follow, and she'll go over to Italy or whatever, and she's like, I eat loaves of bread and pounds of cheese and drink bottles of wine. She said, I never have a hangover, and I come back and I have lost weight. Because they're not putting all the preservatives Process, and garbage and the processed yeah. stuff in it. And that's really what it is. But, I mean, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Grow our own crap in the backyard on our you, fake you, AstroTurf? You just said the other day you wanted to start growing your own food somewhere. I know, but, we're, but we have to go get a farm somewhere and do it. We have fake grass in our backyard. Where are we going to build it? Where are we going to build our farm? Where are we going to build our garden? I don't know. I want to grow tomatoes. What are you going to do when I die before you? Ouch. I'm going to marry some young, hot thing. That's what I'm going to do. When you die, it'll be after you're dead. What? What do you say? What am I going to do? You didn't really want me to answer that? It's kind of a clap back. But... All right, babe. You know what? I think I'm going to save the list of things that I see on the social media, because there are a lot of these. And we'll do that next time, since we did so much this time. We did do a lot. Yeah, we did a lot. We did a lot. It was good, though. It was fun. Was it good? I think was so. Was it fun? Except the part where you're talking about marrying hot things when I die. You I, said... I'm what not sure you, I really enjoy that. Didn't you say that, something to the effect of what are you going to oh, do so after fine. I die? It's fine. It's all good. Didn't you say something to that effect? Okay. We already know what you're doing after I die. Well, when I'm dead, I'm dead. I won't know any better. Exactly. So, yeah, whatever. All right, Beth. You got anything else? <laughs> nope. All right. Well, love you desperately. But you see, you're a young, hot thing. Young compared to me. Oh, yeah. But when you yeah. die, yeah. I'm going to have to go out and find another one. But the problem is, I'm going to be even older than what I was when I snagged you. Kelly did say my hair is getting darker. Isn't it? For those of you watching on YouTube, which I hope you all are, we do record our podcast live on our YouTube channel, which yes. you can find at a Saint. Just search a Saint, which is some love. Subscribe. Please do. Um, Alan, actually, because he's like, we need to start, you know, beyond just posting us recording the podcast, he's like, we need to start posting some more videos. And we've talked about it before. A lot of, lot of yeah, 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 not a lot of action, but we're going to do it because I know I said, we, we, honey. 
So um, Alan finally, for the first time in 2024, is going to take me out for a golf lesson again tomorrow. I think this is our fourth time going in two years. Well, the la last year it got so hot, and I didn't like that. So we're going to go tomorrow, mm -hmm. and I've got I've got like all these cute little golf outfits that I've been wanting to wear. I need to tan my legs, and I've got to do that before tomorrow. But I said, why don't we video some of that? And you can do like a little golf tutorial on our YouTube channel. Yeah, do a golf lesson. But we're going to have to set up a tripod and all this business to make it happen. Yeah. So make sure, now it's going to take Alan a minute, because Alan is also the editor <laughs> of the YouTube videos. So not, not going to be a real quick turnaround, but we will let you know when those videos are posted. But the better way to find out when they're posted is just to subscribe yes. to the YouTube That'll channel. That will be the first step. Yeah. Okay. Just like you have subscribed, hopefully, to our podcast, wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts, A Sandwich and Some Lovin'. Yes. Very good, babe. Very good. Very good. Reinforcement. Very good. Promotion and reinforcement. You got anything else? Babe, I. what else do you want? Well, I love you desperately. I love you. Love our listeners desperately. I love y'all. I love Cosmics desperately. Do you? You gave it a six or a seven. Well, I, it, was, it was pretty good. I don't know if I'll go back, but you know. Hey. Well, that's not loving desperately. Well, I love them desperately for trying. You gotta try new things. Every once in a while, you gotta try new things. I love the knitting circle desperately. I hope they never know who I am because I don't want them to think they I'm... They are. I don't want them to think I'm creepy. Because you're gonna buy them all coffee or a little sweet. I will. Treat. I will do that. Sometimes. And then you might learn how to knit. I may. And I am sure we will podcast again real soon. And in the immortal words of the great Keanu Reeves, life is good when you have a good sandwich.